Oh, hello. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes, you're good now. We can. Okay. Hey, I just want to say uh, thank you for everybody for being here. Um, thank you for Brittany for being my opponent. Thank you for the PFL for blessing me with this opportunity to be able to cross over and continue boxing at the same time. I'm super uh, grateful and honored to be here and um, looking forward to the challenge with Brittany on Thursday. Thank you. Brittany, would you like to make an opening statement? Can you hear me? Yes, good now. Uh, yeah, I'm also very excited to make my my time in the cage on Thursday, um, as well as thank you for Clarissa for uh, fighting me. Um, I, I'm just ready to perform really well and uh, ready. I'm very well prepared for this. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome. Great. I will go ahead and start taking some questions from the media. Uh, first up, let's go with Tom Ward, please. Or a question for Clarissa here. Um, obviously, as the quote, you've probably got your pick of the punch when it comes to uh, MMA gyms. What specifically made you choose Jackson Wink? Um, I chose Jackson Wink gym because I'm just a believer that if you, like anybody can train, anybody can train hard, anybody can train long, but it's about training correctly. And I felt like, Jackson Wink was the perfect gym because I feel like Johnny Bones trains correctly, you know, and also Holly Holm was able to make the transition from MMA to boxing. And um, I just felt like they would be able to help me with my transition and, uh, and that they can actually teach me, you know, I, and like I said, you can go anywhere and learn, you know, but it's just like, are you being taught the right thing? So I really wanted to be taught the right things. And I really felt like when I did my homework on coach Jackson and coach Wink at their gate, um, that they're great uh, game uh, game planners and great uh, strategists. So I had to go to Jackson Week and see it for myself. And, and it was right. They're um, great following coaches. On, following on from that, who's going to be in your uh, corner on Thursday night? Coach Jackson and Coach Wink will be in my corner fight night. Amazing. Best of luck. Thank you. Up next, Eddie Goldman. Okay. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Question for both uh, Clarissa and Brittany. There have been a couple of fights in the last several years in MMA history where uh, top level professional boxers have gone into MMA with, with different results. One of them was uh, James Tony against Randy Couture and another one was Holly Holm that Clarissa just mentioned against Ronda Rousey. I wonder if you two have watched those two fights, and even though they're all different kind of styles than you two, what, what lessons you might have drawn from those two fights? Which one of us talks first? Well, Br Brittany, you spoke first, so I guess you can answer first. Um, I have watched both of those fights. Um, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you want outcomes such as they both happen. I mean, both, I think, parties could say that. Uh, it, I, there's so much ground to cover in uh, MMA, so it's you just want the verses to cross. But, um, I mean, obviously, I hope that stylistically mine prevails over boxing, you know? Yeah, and, um, you know, just to follow up, you know, from Brittany, um, I've never seen the fight between James Tony and Randy Couture because, what is there to see? I mean, he trained a month and a half, two months to get Randy for Couture, you know, for, for, for Randy Couture. Um, he didn't train any MMA. Uh, he was 42 years old, and that's the story there, you know, and he got knocked out first round. And then you have the fight with Ronda Rousey and Holly Holm, which I actually betted on Holly Holm to win that fight because I knew her boxing background, and I knew that Ronda Rousey was trying to – um, prove to everybody that she could box and not only just, you know, get people their arm bars and do uh, judo and jujitsu. So I was able to watch that fight and uh, watch uh, Holly Holm prevail. Um, I don't I don't make that comparison between me and James Tony because James Tony was great in boxing, just as I am. But when it comes to making the transition in MMA, he didn't take it serious. And also, too, I'm 26 compared to him being 42. That's a big age difference. So... I feel like, um, you know, if any boxer wants to come to MMA, right, 
and they think that they don't have to train any of the other arts, um, those boxers will always lose. Uh, happily, I'm not one of those boxers, though I've been at Jackson Winks for the past seven months, and I've had great sparring. Um, I've done some jujitsu. I've done a. I've, I've been do, uh, doing some wrestling. I've been actually doing all these arts and mixing them together to get the best thing that I can get and be the best fighter that I can be. So um, that's what I'll do on Thursday because we have a game plan and uh, and my job is just to follow the game plan and execute. And I believe that I've always done a great job at doing that. And do either of you want to make a prediction for this fight? I'm a win. That's all my prediction is, the W. I'm quite sure she feels the same way as she should if she, she doesn't. I feel, it, uh, I feel it's going to end in the second round and I'm going to win. Okay, thank you. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Let's uh, up next, Dan uh, Raphael. Uh, Dan Raphael. Hello, everybody. Oh, sorry. Thank no you. No problem. Uh, I'd like to start off with a question. Clarissa, how are you today? Good. How are you, Dan? I'm doing great. Um, when we spoke uh, a few months ago when you made this decision to, uh, to join the PFL and to begin your MMA journey, you know, we were talking about all the things that you needed to adjust to that would be different than your professional boxing. And I remember you spoke to me about, you know, really trying to, you know, make sure that you knew how to properly kick and, you know, use your lower part of your body as opposed to your striking. I wonder in the, in the several months since you've been doing it, how is your kicking coming along? And do you think that's going to be like, a big part of uh, what occurs on Thursday? I think I think I think that my kicking has come along well. I feel like my jujitsu and even my wrestling has come along well um, because I haven't just you know strictly focused on just my boxing because my boxing is already so strong. It's just more making those small adjustments. So everything has been uh, very great. And honestly, like I wouldn't be here if I thought that I would be getting in the cage at a disadvantage to lose. Like everybody's making a big deal that Brittany Elkin is a brown belt or purple belt in jujitsu, but but the thing is, MMA is, MMA is not just jujitsu. It's, it's boxing. It's kickboxing. It's wrestling. Um, it's boxing. You know, it's all these different arts. And I don't think that uh, people should just count me out because I'm not um, a ground specialist. It's like without boxing, MMA, everything would be on the ground and you just be throwing kicks. So it's like the punching matters and all of them matter, but it's just about who can use what they know the best. So I've practiced in all of them, and I think I have, I think I have a great chance to win on Thursday and have a great transition. And now that you're coming into a new sport, you have a big name from boxing. Obviously, anybody that you face in the cage is going to want to make that name off, you know, beating, uh, you know, a, a, a big name, whether you're a boxer or a MMA athlete. So I wonder, like, what kind of nerves are there as you go into a new sport? We already know what you can do in the boxing match. But is there a little bit more nerves that you're facing uh, a, a different kind of athlete at all in, in an MMA match? No, no, um, I don't. I don't have any nerves because nerves do not help you for the fight. I feel like I prepared to be here. You know, I would have had nerves. You know, if they would have told me that this fight was happening four or five months ago, I'd be like, oh my god, you know, because I really wasn't had like I really hadn't really submerged myself in it yet. You know. But now that I've been doing it for seven months and I've had like so much training and uh, so much time to learn so many different things and understand what I'm doing, understand what it is that I need to do, you know, for this fight, I'm completely comfortable and I look forward to Thursday. Like instead of having nerves, I'm actually excited. So that's a good thing. Like, I'm excited to be there. I'm excited to fight and uh, come out victorious. So I'm just excited, but no, but no nerves though. <laughs> All right. I certainly wish you good luck. I'd have a question for uh, Brittany also, if she's still there. Brittany? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you heard what Clarissa had to say about that. And now you're, I, I think that maybe, uh, maybe not you, the athlete, but fans who watch may think, you know, you're the MMA fighter that's now charged with uh, taking care of the boxer, trying to be the interloper into MMA. How much of like a rude welcome to this new sport for her do you want to give her? We know you're experienced in this, but she's kind of coming onto your turf. Do you want to make sure that she remembers it in a very bad way? Well, I just hopefully it doesn't work out for her. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm hoping that my my tactics go together well and hers don't. Um, you know, I think it's per person transitions into the sport per person. You know, what they're willing to give the sport or what they're willing to train for the sport. So 
you know, my, my goal is just not to make her game plan work out, you know, and um, I'm not putting the task on shutting down like some new elitist athlete in the sport. I'm putting on the task of my fight and me and Clarissa fighting. So I'm going to do my best to shut down, you know, her tools and, and play, play into the, the tools I have. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I feel confident in doing it. And my last question for you is, I know you have your specialty in mixed martial arts. Obviously, her specialty, even though she says she's trained for seven months in MMA, obviously is as a striker because she's a boxer. I wonder, in your preparation, did you ever go and look at any of her boxing matches just to see what her striking is about, even though there's no film of her to watch in terms of the other uh, things that you would do in an MMA fight? Oh, absolutely. What, I watched the videos a lot in the beginning of the camp we watched many many videos of her footwork and everything like that of where she's standing when she's throwing so yes I, i've reviewed many many tapes and what do you think i feel confident and i'm here i'm gonna i'm gonna take that on i feel confident to try to lead her into what uh i got to offer all right great thank you i wish you good luck also appreciate your time thank you all right just a friendly <laughs> reminder one question per media up next we're gonna go with Tanai. Hi, I'm Tanaya from MMA Island. I have a question for Peter. Peter, Hi how's there. it going? Hey, All right, um, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, I just want to ask the, uh, when the fans would return. Obviously, PFL 1, 2, 3 were great, and PFL 4, 5, 6 are going to be great as well. But I understand that, that the PFL is still in the bubble. When, when can we expect fans? Yeah, I mean, we're really focused on uh, – distributing uh, our live fights around the world. You know, we're on ESPN here in the U.S., and we distribute to 160 countries. Uh, so that, that's number one. Number two, uh, we're, we're evaluating uh, as, as state regulations uh, change uh, the ability to, to have fans uh, um, attend the events. Uh, we're, we're not planning that for uh, the regular season, uh, but, but come the postseason, we'll be making an announcement later this week on the uh, official home of the 2021 uh, PFL playoffs. Uh, it'll be a residency and, and uh, certainly uh, there'll be additional access beyond uh, production uh, personnel and the fighters for, uh, for um, potentially fans uh, attending those events. Awesome. Can't wait for the fights. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Up next, Dylan. Volker, please. Hey there, Clarissa. Appreciate you making some time. No problem. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I was just curious because, you know, much has been made of your work at, you know, Jackson Wink recently, but I'm kind of curious if you've been able to, you know, pick the brains of certain athletes like, you know, Heather Hardy and Amanda Serrano, who have also done the crossover you're endeavoring to do. Um, I haven't been able to pick. Uh, Heather Hardy or Amanda Serrano brain, but I've been able to pick Holly Holm brain, right? And I've been able to pick Johnny Bones brain. And I've been able to put, um, you know, my brain together with Coach Jackson and Coach Wink, you know, to make this transition to be as comfortable for me um, as they want it to be, right? So I've been able to talk to um, some greats, and I feel like Holly is just, she's like the cheat code for me because she's done it successfully, the only boxer. Like, people talk about me transitioning, but it's like I want to be – MMA world champ and boxing champ at the same time. Like Holly Holm, she she did it, but she did it uh, one at a time. So that's the only difference. So uh, me, so me and her had, had plenty of conversations. We had plenty of sparring sessions, you know, between her and I, and we've done some wrestling stuff and some jujitsu stuff together, um, you know, to help get me prepared for this fight. Great person to pick the brain of, and I appreciate you making some time. No problem. Thank you. Up next, uh, Zach Grady, please. Hi, thank you for your time. Uh, questions for Brittany, Zachary Grady, uh, USA Today Sports. Just wanted to touch base. So much of this lead up has been about Clarissa's debut. How has that helped you stay concentrated during your camp, kind of flying under the radar here as we go into PFL4? I think it's done me a great service. Um, I got to stay away from all of you guys um, for eight weeks and, and work my ass off. Um, hearing about Clarissa's kind of been like grated cheese and the block is getting really small. So I'm, I'm fucking at my end and about ready to fight. You know, maybe we'll be friends after who fucking knows, but I'm sorry for cussing on USA Today. I'll mm -hmm. check. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it's just been, it's been grating at me, you know, um, but I also, it's been, it's been great because I've been in the gym, like, religiously, and I, I haven't been in the forefront, I haven't had to deal with all the media stuff, so I've very, very had a lot of time to prepare, um, and uh, I think it's going to let me sneak on in there. No apologies needed. We'll uh, make sure to get those quotes right for I'll you, but thank you very I'll much. To those words. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, Titan Channel, please. Hello, it's uh, Vanessa from Titan Channel. Uh, my question is for Clarissa. Um, you've been uh, an Olympic champion, uh, WBA, IBF, WBC, WBO champion. Um, how did you decide to jump to the MMA? Um, after accomplishing all that I've accomplished in boxing, you know, I have a great resume, you know, resumes that men want to have, but um, the men in boxing have millions of dollars and I don't got millions of dollars. So that's kind of what made my transition to MMA because I feel like um, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker and I learn things fast and I'm just uh, super ambitious and super determined. And I felt like if I put that same amount of time and energy into MMA, possibly I could be you know, as successful as I was in boxing in May. So that's why I decided to make the transition. Also, just like the, uh, just the equality of the PFL, you know, giving the women a chance to fight for the million dollars and having the 155, uh, the 155 weight class and the lowest I fought is 154 in boxing. So it kind of made, you know, so much sense just like the equality, the weight class, you know, be, to be given that opportunity and also the PFL still allow me to, uh, to box. So it was just like, I don't have to give up boxing to pursue MMA. So it all kind of just fell together. Thank you. We send you yep. both our luck from Spain and Latin America. Thank you. Up next, Breeze, please. Hey, this is Breeze with the MMA Breeze. Uh, question for Clarissa. I wanted to ask, you have the goal of becoming the two-time uh, simultaneous champ in boxing and MMA. Should it not go your way this season, being your first season, and you come up a little short of that goal, will we see you again in the in the following years to come in MMA? Will it be with PFL? And I don't know why it wouldn't go my way. And see, that's the thing. I don't like questions like that because I, I'm I'm a winner, right? So I think about winning. So right now, of course, the big goal and the big picture is to be MMA champ and world champ at the same time. But um, I'm just I'm just not a person who think about losing. You know what I'm saying? So uh, with that, you know, I'm going to take it one fight at a time and just kind of go from there. You know, like, it's, it's about me getting, the, me getting the experience so when it's time for me to join the PFL season, I can be prepared for those top girls and those girls who are there. But right now, my main focus is Brittany, and I'm not thinking about no other fights after that. So we're going to take care of Thursday, and then we'll think about the girls who come after. But I'm definitely not thinking about nothing with the word losing even involved in it and me fighting that's just not what i'm thinking 10 4 thank you so much all right um curtis calhoun please hi curtis calhoun with uh low kick mma question for peter uh you announced earlier this year that uh wiz khalifa is going to be added to the pfl team can you kind of talk about the impact that he's made already in the short time he's been on the team and talk to us a little bit about what his role with the league will be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, nice to connect with, uh, is part of our ownership group. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, the relationship started, uh, he's an investor, uh, along with being a music and cultural icon. Uh, and it was really the perfect fit for us to partner. Uh, MMA is, is part of his lifestyle, uh, his own personal training regimen, and he's a fan of the sport. Uh, so it makes it such a natural fit. And uh, as a role, you know, he, he's playing a role and help us shape the brand. Uh, number one, it, it expand our content offerings. Number two, we're even collaborating on uh, lifestyle, PFL theme lifestyle uh, apparel, along with his uh, Taylor Gang brand. Uh, so uh, his main focus will be, um, you know, helping us continue to grow the brand. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, Jay Anderson, please. 
Hey, thanks very much for the time today. And I guess this will be one question I'll let both of you answer. Um, Clarissa, you mentioned spending, you know, seven months or so training with Jackson Wink, you know, in all the disciplines. How important is it to show those other disciplines, to show that you're more than a boxer? And Brittany, at the end of the day, are you expecting more than a, a stand-up fight? Um, for me, I think it's, it's important. I mean, it's MMA, right? So I'm, of course, going to let my hands go because that's what I'm known for and that's what I know best. But I feel like I've got comfortable with putting a few different things together to make my game plan be a little bit more um, complex than, you know, for it to be just, oh, we just have to worry about her boxing. So I got some other things up my sleeve um, for Brittany just besides the boxing. But um, you guys can find that out on um, on Thursday. And um, I plan to, to face an athlete, a, a prepared athlete for this fight. I am aware that she has hands. Um, I'm aware of a lot of things that I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to do to her. So um, if I can go anywhere, I'm keeping an open mind. And um, I also think that I can take the fight somewhere too. So like, I'm prepared to do ground or stand up and defense and offense. So. All right. Thanks very much for the time. Um, up next, Michael Morales, please. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for the opportunity. My question is for Clarissa. Uh, what's the most challenging part of doing that transition from the boxing industry to MMA? Um, of course, the most difficult part for me is just, like I said, it's, it's the ground art, you know, as far as in like, it's, it, at the beginning, when you first start learning jiu-jitsu, you just be laying there on your back and you like, what am I doing? And it's like, it's kind of foreign to boxers because we're standing up um, and our legs is, yeah, we use our legs, but it's more of everything is really upper body and punches. But then um, jiu-jitsu is like a smaller person can use technique to be a bigger, stronger person, right? So it's more of like a, like a defense mechanism almost. It's like, they can get into a shell and but they can still be able to get you in like a weird position or whatever so um jujitsu was was one of the ones that um i struggled with at the beginning and um just the biggest part of mma which is the hardest to me in all is just putting everything together you know what i mean like you go from boxing to to wrestling to now you have to either do jujitsu or defend jujitsu or you know, just being on the ground and, you know, coming up, like when you got to put all those different mindsets together, um, up at first, it can be very, very challenging, especially for a boxer, right? So the wrestling came to me easy. Um, the wrestling came to me very, very easy. And wrestling kind of can sometimes offset jujitsu. So um, we kind of mixed all that in and tried to get my mind ready to one, go fight five minutes and then be able to think the whole five minutes and transition to whatever we got to transition to uh, in a, in a sparring. So that was the biggest part at first. But after doing it, you know, for about five months, it's like, okay, now I understand it. I get it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. But at first, everything besides boxing was hard. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And good luck to both of you on, on, on Thursday. Thanks. Thank you. Up next, Luke Kelly, please. Hi, Luke from Empire Universe. Um, I have a question for Clarissa and Brittany. So I'll start with Clarissa here. How are you? I'm good. Are you? I'm just great. Thank you. Um, I guess this might be an obvious question, but what prompted your decision to transition from, uh, from boxing to MMA? Was it just a challenge? Was it your legacy? It was more, it, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Like, I think that my legacy in boxing can never be tarnished. I feel like I've, I, I've just accomplished too much. And that um, even now, there are girls who are at top in boxing who know that they cannot beat me, you know? So um, I think my boxing legacy is cemented. I really want to try MMA for me. I felt like a couple years ago, I felt like I would, I was kind of thinking about the transition, but it was always like something for me, like, I never really like thought like about all the different arts and you know really really wanting to go into MMA. Um, when the opportunity presented itself with the PFL, it just was like, you know, it was a great it, it was a great conversation with the owners. I mean, they uh, they had the PFL seasons giving the women and men athletes 
um, a, a $1 million chance to be in the tournament, to be in the season. And uh, that's what um, actually attracted me to it and made me just, um, you know, have a conversation with God, have a conversation with my family and see, uh, and have a conversation with my uh with myself knowing that making the transition or making the making the, the transition uh, to be as successful as I want to be, you know, just accepting that it wasn't going to be easy, you know, and boxing has always come easy to me. It's always come easy. Um, I've been a complete fighter before I was 14, 13 years old. So it was like, now you're kind of going to go to MMA, start from the bottom. It was just asking myself, like, are you prepared to start from the bottom and work your way up? And the answer I gave myself was like, you know, hell yeah. Like, it's time to try something new. And, uh, and I believe 100% in my training and 100% in myself. Perfect. Thank you, Clarissa. And Brittany, um, so, I mean, you get to call the, the fight Clarissa Shields. What was your mindset at your motions? They called me on April Fool's Day. I run events, uh, and I was working an event, a cage fighting event in Philadelphia. I was working the door and getting all the Philadelphians in, and Ray called me on, like, April Fool's, so at first I thought it was a joke. I, I follow fighting and combat, all combat sports, like most of them, and I saw that Clarissa was signed earlier that year, but uh, at that point I was like, oh, I'm not fighting, so I, I won't be in my class. Um, Ray threw it down on the table and I just stepped away from the door for a minute and I kind of didn't believe him because it was April Fool's Day. So I called him back and I was like, is, are you serious? And then, then I started to really look at it and it's, it's a great, it's a great matchup for, for sports. I mean, it's, it's a purist versus, you know, most of purest ground purist. even though I have the MMA background, a lot of my accolades are on the ground. So it's, it's interesting. And, uh, I like, I like the fight. I like the matchup. I pulled out of myself out of retirement to come and be one of the competitors in here. So I'm, I'm pretty fucking excited. And I think the best part about this fight is being in it. Perfect. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Last question, Mr. Harry Mack, please. A uh, question for Brittany. Uh, Harry Mack, bookies, from the Bookies Basement. Hope you're doing well. But, uh, I'm so, doing well, thank you. Good. So obviously this is a massive opportunity for you, and there's going to be uh, you know, a lot of eyes on this fight with uh, Clarissa's debut. So you're coming in as a, a fairly sizable plus 375 betting underdog, despite you know, the advantage and experience and everything like that. So I just kind of wanted to know, do you feel like you're being overlooked at all by odds makers or, or the fans? I mean, none of that really – I mean <laughs> – I kind of was okay with it. If I was being overlooked, it really left this little uh, place for me to like hide and train and, and get, get ready for this fight. Um, and numbers like that don't really matter to me. Hopefully somebody makes some money. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, on paper, I probably don't look like I'm a great fighter. I feel like I'm an awesome fighter. So I'm prepared. Um, I, like I said, those numbers don't get in my head. I don't bet. So um, somebody go bet, make some money. Um, and like that kind of stuff doesn't get in my head uh, at all. I'm totally ready. Actually, we laugh about it. Me and my head coach, uh, we're like, ah. So I just, um, I'm in a great mood, great spirit for this fight, and uh, I hope to make the odds or give a big upset. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Best of luck to you both. Thanks, thank you guys. All right, I am gonna go ahead and turn it over to Peter Murray for closing statements. Oh, thank you, Tony. Well, hey, first off, I want to thank uh, the media for once again for joining us today. And uh, most importantly, um, I want to just thank Clarissa and Brittany. We really appreciate uh, you being part of the PFL and uh, wish you the best uh, this Thursday night. And for fans, we have Thursday night MMA, uh, June 10th. Uh, th this event, Clarissa versus Brittany. Uh, which is PFL four uh, special attraction main event on that card on Thursday night. Uh, events will be televised on ESPN two in prime time as well as ESPN plus. Um, and uh, once again, be beyond this epic, I believe moment in sports, uh, Clarissa's debut and and her bout versus Brittany, we we have the second half of the PFL 2021 season. And uh, I, I think one of the biggest stories on, on that card is, will Anthony Pettis make it into the playoffs? It's, it's, it's win and advance or lose and go home. So it's going to be a great night this Thursday night on ESPN for Fight Fans. So once again, thank you all. Great job, Tawny, Lauren, put, putting this all together. 
And once again, Caressa, appreciate you. And Brittany, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I will uh, hopefully see most of you at 1 o'clock for PFL4 Virtual Media Day. Thanks again for attending.